Hi everyone. So, a lot of things have changed since the beginning of January 2024. 2024 is actually the first year that I've decided to actually take control of my life and get my life back together. After being through so, so many failed attempts of getting my life back together, I decided this year I'm going to be persistent for once and not let anything get in the way of me achieving my goals. And I've learned that in order to actually do that, you need to be open with the idea that things might change and a lot of situations may arise no matter how much you've planned or how detailed your goals are. So whatever happens, you just need to keep going. And it's okay if you have to reflect and reevaluate and readjust your goals once a month or even once every few weeks. That's completely normal and I think that's a very healthy way to approach your goals. If you've made New Year's resolutions before or even if you've made a vision board for your life and somehow it doesn't work as well as you hoped it would, I learned that it is very important to set goals that are actually achievable for you. The goals that they can be challenging, but they cannot be too far to reach because you will feel like giving up, not even halfway, but very much at the beginning of the process. So just grab a notebook, a planner or a journal and let's journal together today. So the first page of today's journaling section is going to be the January month end reflection. I will write down the things I did that went well and the things that didn't go very well. Things that I will need to maintain and things that I need to readjust and reevaluate. One of the main career goals that I had for 2024 that I wrote on my vision board bucket list and also the goals and the action plans that I wrote at the beginning of January is setting up my Etsy shop and that goal needed to change just a few days into the month because my Etsy shop has been suspended for mm, I don't know what the reason was I was very upset and also very confused because I was too focused on it, you know. I made a very detailed plan of how I'm going to achieve it and what are the steps, what are the small steps that I'm going to take to achieve those goals. But now that goal needed a complete change and, you know, it's okay. It's just life, I guess. Sometimes you just got to remind yourself that just because something bad happened, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world and it doesn't mean that you cannot do something about it. Sometimes all you got to do is just take a step back, relax and change your perspective a little. I think that the ability to be flexible with your own goals is the ultimate secret to success that not many people tell you. I'm not saying that I'm successful or anything, but since I've changed my mindset to this kind of thinking, I have felt a lot calmer than a few years ago, or even compared to last year, I have improved a lot. So take a look back at the goals that you set at the beginning of 2024, or if you didn't set any goals for this year, you can start doing it right now with me and just write out the, the habits that you would like to change or the habits that you would like to maintain for the next month. For the next 10 minutes, I'm going to stop talking for a little while and let you journal with me in silence. So let's reflect January 2024 together.
Now that I've finished my month end reflection, I'm going to write the goals that I want to obtain in February. For this section, I'm going to compare notes between my yearly resolution that I wrote at the beginning of the year, and I will also carefully compare the January reflections that I just wrote down to give me the idea of what I need to improve for next month and what are the goals that I need to build. If you don't know what goals you want to set for the month or even the year, then I would highly recommend you to just go on Pinterest and type small goal ideas that you will find so many cool ideas that is related to literally every aspect of your life. You can just have goals that highlights your personal self-care or if there's anything that you want to improve about your socializing skills or your work habits, your study, literally anything. As I said, the goals don't need to be too big and I think it shouldn't be too big anyways. Some of my goals for next month would be starting a new 30-day yoga challenge with Yoga with Adrian, and I also want to post video once or twice a week on YouTube. I want to go out more to explore new places in my city, and I also want to read one to two books next month. The majority of my goals are actually just related to personal self-care like drawing, painting, journaling, and trying new recipes, more digital detox, less fun time. So just to give you an idea that it's nothing big, you can just have really small goals and be happy with it. So I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes here to brainstorm your goal ideas and write down the goals that you want to achieve in the next month.
For the last page of today's section, I'm going to just do a basic, simple monthly spread. I honestly don't like weekly spread because I tried it before and it doesn't really work well for me. I feel like I prefer to have a monthly planner so that I can highlight the things that I need to focus on um, each day of the month and then I want to plan daily instead of weekly. I do want to plan a very detailed daily to-do list because I feel like it gives me a lot more focus on what I need to do. Each day is literally going to be a new day for me and the reason why weekly planning doesn't work for me is because I'm quite moody. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things can change in a day or two given my mood or my physical state. Sometimes I need to do less and sometimes I feel like I can do a lot more. Well, you know, it's a learning curve and I'm actually very happy with what I'm doing right now. It actually works for me and it's not overwhelming. It's very easy and very basic. So I'm going to draw a quick February calendar here to give me the idea of the month. This is just a very basic spread and I know that it's not very aesthetic or not very creative monthly planner, but you know, for the sake of embracing imperfections this year, I'm happy with it. So again, I'm going to uh, be quiet for the next couple of minutes and let you journal in silent with me.
I am just going to write a little bit of the monthly focus here and I'm going to fill in as I go. First up, I want to post a video on YouTube weekly as I said and also I want to do a Sunday reset every weekend which will include grocery shopping and deep cleaning the house which I will write more detailed on my daily to-do list. Thursdays are going to be mini reset and personal self-care day. I will also write any other important dates which for February is going to be the biggest holiday of the year is the Lunar New Year. This pen actually takes so long to dry and I was a little bit too excited for today's journaling section so I didn't wait long enough for it to dry and I kind of made my pages very dirty. I don't know if you can see it from the video but that's why I'm using the eraser to kind of trying to get all of the dirt from the leftover ink out of my pages as much as possible. So for the last couple of minutes of the video, I really hope that you would write just the idea of how February is going to be for you. Write down two to three important days that you want to focus on. What are the themes that you want to achieve for the next month? At the end of the video, I'm going to give you a little tour of my current daily planning habit, which is really easy and basic, but I also have a smaller journal that I sometimes write the things that are just on my mind, the ideas that I have for my business or for self-care, the reminders that I want to have um, to focus on for the days that I don't feel very well, or when I just feel creative, I also like to journal in that mini journal. For the daily planner spread, I usually write my to-do list for the first half of the page. And the second half of the page, I usually leave it for daily journaling, where I just write everything that's on my mind that day, whether it's good thoughts or bad thoughts or my gratitudes for the day. If you want to jump right into the last part of the video, um, the planner slash journal tour, I will leave you the timestamp in this video. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you had a good journaling session with me and I will see you soon. Happy journaling. See ya.